Hey, so what does a heart icon do? A like, right? Wrong. Rule number one, don't assume everybody interprets icons the same way, because people are actually viewing them very differently. And I'm gonna give you an example in which 67% of the users actually thought the heart icon meant something else. Welcome to another set of design tips, and as usual, there's gonna be five of them. They're all gonna be based on my previous experiences while designing digital products for the last 22 years. And I'm also posting those daily on Twitter, so if you want to get them every single day, just follow me on Twitter under this link. Ready? Let's begin. Tip 1. Let's start with that heart problem. Back in 2012, I was working on a grocery store loyalty app for rural areas, meaning mostly farmers. It was a very specific target audience and it was one of those rare cases where some semi-persona-like constructs were actually needed. We conducted a lot of interviews during this project and the users challenged us every step of the way. One of the problems we had to face was adding products to the favorite list. We wrongfully assumed that a heart icon is going to be enough, but the first prototype test showed that nearly two-thirds of the users never tapped on the icon. So we decided to ask them what the icon meant and to our surprise 67% said it meant a healthy product. Healthy for the heart because you know heart, health, there must be some mental connection here. It didn't raise any red flags for them even when the heart icons were next to sugary sodas. They just assumed that it's a soda that's healthy for the heart, which is absurd. People interpret icons differently between cultures or even demographics within one culture. Whenever you can, just use labels next to icons and test, test, test. Tip number two. Fully rounded or pill-shaped fields have a certain label alignment issue. While it can be okay for short two-field forms, the longer the form, the harder it is to actually follow it along the left edge. That is because the left edge is optically in two places at once, like a magician, where the field begins and when the roundness ends. That causes our eyes to shift left and right constantly. Whenever you can use slightly rounded or sharp corners in text fields, especially in longer forms, it will make scanning the inputs along the left edge a lot smoother. Tip number three. Form placeholders or entries inside the text field should optimally be the same size as the labels. Button text can be bigger to signify that final decision, that final action. To make it easier to scan, two font sizes for the form are more than enough. The more different sizes, the more our brains need to work and we don't really want it to work too hard, do we? Tip number four. This is an iOS thing, but make sure your placeholder or input text size is 16 or larger. If it's smaller, then the OS will actually zoom in the entire screen when it's focused, so not just the form field. That also distorts the rest of the viewport and messes up our perception, because everything is blown up and some parts of the screen that you have seen before are actually beyond the edges of the screen now. To be safe, just go with 16 points or higher and it's more readable that way anyway. Tip number five. When we're talking buttons, we're thinking rectangles. They're one shape that's instantly recognized as a button in user interfaces. The second most popular, underlined text links. The third is circles, but they're a far third. Other shapes should be avoided completely, but even circles take a little while to be understood as clickable. You can't go wrong with a rectangle, keep that in mind. Can be rounded, can be sharp, but always better than a circle, triangle, or some random blob. And that's it for today. You need to remember one thing though. No amount of quick tips is gonna make you a better designer. It's just not enough. Tips are helpful, of course, but you need practice and you need a lot of it. So these tips can help, but they're just really bumps forward and you need to do a lot of the work still yourself. Tips are not enough to make you a better designer. I'm gonna repeat that because many people think that they can just follow a couple of tips and that's gonna be it. You don't become a great designer by just memorizing a bunch of tips. 
What you need is a daily design challenge for months or years. And those tips are basically little hints that you have along the way, but really, they're not gonna make you a designer. So thanks for watching. As usual, like, subscribe, and go make some designs because that's what it's all about. Have a great day. Cheers. Uh -huh.